ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to today's show. Just got all suited up and are ready for another full day of action here in the Holly Davis Pavilion at the Red Bluff Outlaws. It's pretty loud in staging. It's just starting to rain. The weather this weekend uh, was not ideal for winter travel. Here is a look yesterday as I was leaving my house to come down here. People ask why I love living in the Pacific Northwest. Well, 10 minutes ago, we had a blizzard going on, and now it is one of the most beautiful sights you will ever see. So in the past couple of days, we've got a bunch of snow. Luckily, we left when we did because, you know, the Interstate 5 was actually closed on the way down last night, and we're probably gonna have an even tougher time trying to get back home, but that's what we do to make all this happen. Long story short, just got my fire suit. We just got our cars all fired up. It's funny how much the CR500s vibrate these outlaw carts, you know, when they're cold. Uh, you can see my steering wheel, like it's just shaking the whole time, and that's a lot of horsepower on a very light race car, and that's why you see them move all around the track but anyway we have open qualifying here shortly that will be our first uh, opportunity to be on track for the day last cars out again this week for the open class 34 of us in our division and we timed in seventh quick one of the situations I've kind of been analyzing my qualifying here specifically as I have for years and it's funny it's like some weeks I feel like I go too hard some weeks I try to be smoother and then I don't go fast enough and then here and there I'll run a really really good lap and be close to the top of the charts and this week we weren't bad ended up seventh quick and we were only about a tenth off of second and then the car that went quick time was another tenth above the field and a lot of that is just the later you went, the better the racetrack got. It's extremely slimy and it was just getting worked in. And basically as the cars go, they just burn off that top layer and it gets down to real grip. When there's too much water on top of a surface, it's just like, I mean, you can feel it when you're out there with your feet walking, like you're just slipping and sliding around. And then, you know, when you have 80 or 90 horsepower on a race car, when you're out there, it's gonna slip and slide around too. Overall, my car felt really good. I thought I ran a good line and was in the right spot on the racetrack. It's just the difference difference in all of us um, you know on the qualifying board is faster than you can think so it really just comes down to who can get through the corner absolutely perfect carry as much speed not spin the tires so that's going to move us into into a heat race they do a four car invert so we're going to be rolling off from second row inside starting position I'm actually in a teammate with my or I'm actually in a heat race with my teammate Landon so he starts fourth I start third we're on row two and we're going to be both charging to try to get to row one because they're going to be advancing the top two directly into tonight's a main event it makes this cutthroat and these eight laps really important because um, you know that really affects your starting position come a main event time and none of us want to have to run the alphabet soon. the outside wall with both tires. I luckily didn't scratch up the beadlocks, but the racetrack, it's so rough. You're bouncing around so much that I almost hit the hit the fence on the back stretch and the front stretch. What's happening is the racetrack's got so much grip, 
we got all the horsepower so you know you lift the front end off the ground and you're kind of not always in control of where you're going and you're having to run such a fast pace to try to get away from everyone else and like I said you're kind of just all over the track and even going down the straightaway you know it's typical for tracks to get rough in the corners but even the straightaways have like a whoop section and literally I'm just bouncing all the way it's pretty nuts it's crazy how it makes you feel like you're going so much slower and everything is so real because you're, you're tense you're trying to you know obviously hold control of your race car we started third I was a little nervous about starting on the second row and being on the inside sometimes you can kind of get boxed in there but everything worked out there was a there was a crash on the first lap that got me into second and then the leader kind of screwed up on a restart and I got the lead and then from there I was able just to work on running my best laps I'd probably be lying if I said the car felt good but not because my car doesn't feel good it's just I don't know how you really feel super comfortable on the racetrack it's just got to keep wearing away the top layer and it will naturally smoothen out as the soft spots you know kind of get ripped up and then ran up, up and off the track so with the track having what we call a little bit of character in it tonight, you know, it's a little wet, a little soft in spots, a little bit rough. They brought some equipment out to really work on one and two, just trying to smoothen it out and then also pack the material tight so it didn't, you know, rip back apart and get rough again. And they did this right before our redraw and trophy dashes. It's a, it's a six for the 11 BS. So Tanner Holmes, we got to make it official here. Go ahead and reach in. And it is the number three for the 18T. We appreciate it. After the dashes and some rework, the racetrack is shaping up nicely. You can kind of roll both lanes in both corners. It's still a little choppy, a little rough. Uh, started third there in that dash, and after all sorts of chaos, almost getting to second, kind of everybody being really close, we came home fourth. So technically we lost a spot, but actually I'm not too upset about that. I would rather start on the outside. I think we're going to be in a better position depending on how things fire off. Here at Red Bluff, though, you never know what the right spot is to be in, but I'm thinking with the racetrack and still being able to carry a lot of momentum around the high side with how much grip it has I think that's going to be a really a uh, really good game plan and glad that this week compared to some of our previous races we're starting much closer to the front but here's one last look they now just have the A main events to go and then we'll be strapping into the 18T for 30 laps well, we're at the point in the night where we're about to get in for the A-Main event. Everything kind of builds up to this, 30 laps. It's kind of like you have your two dice, you shake your hand, and you roll it all out on the table to see the outcome. And with our starting position, I feel good about where we're at. If we can get a good jump, try to work to get into the top two, and if we can get the lead, then you just got to start managing the race. It's kind of like a big game. You know, you're moving your pieces, you're picking what lines you want to run, you got to figure out who you're racing around and what moves they're going to make. And it's tricky, and on top of that, you got to be aware of any changing track conditions as one line gets faster one line slows down and where everyone else is running even when you're out front and they're all behind you so we're gonna get in wish me luck in the 18t we got 30 laps ahead of us
guys, I think uh, I think we lost an engine there on the 18T. Frustrating. I was just kind of just kind of there the whole time. I was close. I was actually probably really good. I just felt like I was getting antsy with myself. Like I knew I needed to make something happen. And looking back, I might have had an opportunity, and I just didn't jump on it. Um, I don't know what it is. Like I I didn't make the bottom work as good as I feel like I could have. I was spinning my tires really bad there. I just like I said, I feel like I was in a spot where my car was fast. But if I could have got out front, it would have been a whole different deal. But being stuck in second and kind of like I said, I kind of felt like I panicked and wasn't really sure. Um, I mean, I was trying the bottom, trying the top, trying not to leave any lanes open. And and then there, um, when I was trying to get back into second, I knew like I had to get going. Uh, I think we lost an engine there entering three. It just kind of died and fell on its face and then shut off all on its own. It's really funny how the sport works. It's interesting as drivers, you know, we remember our wins, but it's easy to forget about them. But we definitely remember the races that we should have won that we lost. And this right here is a perfect situation of that running up front, in the hunt, knocking on the door, things don't go our way, we lost an engine. It's funny, I actually got a text from my car owner, Jimmy, like, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours after this, and he texted me and like, yep, we're done, and you know, had a picture of, you know, what went wrong. Which in this situation, we just broke a crank, and that's kind of of why like it just slowly died and came to a stop there off of turn four but as I always say that's a part of dirt racing and that is what we sign up for Jimmy builds really good engines they make a ton of horsepower we've won a lot of races and as he knows as an engine builder and as I know as a driver like things fail it doesn't matter who you are what you do things do fail and all you can do is rebuild and go back out there and give it another shot and um, I'm always thankful to have his support because you know what he's done for my racing it really has been awesome and I wouldn't be the driver I am today. I wouldn't be the person I am today without Jimmy and you know what he has done for me in my life. So big thanks to him. Big thanks to QRC. We are going to give it another shot. We have a couple more outlaw cart races to finish off the winner and then we'll be on to the 18T sprint car. See you in the next one. Deuces.